Hi there. Um, I posted a video of this somewhat experimental beta tank on an aquarium website, and within 16 hours, it already has 9,000 views. And uh, there's lots of comments and questions, and a couple of requests for me to make a video, so I thought I'd do that. Um, so, first things first, it is three gallons. That is usually not enough for a beta fish. Um, I'm very aware of that. Uh, I have a decent amount of experience with um, 10 excuse me, 10 gallon uh, beta tanks with lots of plants. However, um, this container has a lot of plants. Um, I do water changes, and it has more um, horizontal swimming space than a 10 gallon tank. Uh, this is about 250 square inches of swimming space, uh, whereas a 10 gallon has about 220. Um, so I think for a betta fish, uh, which is from kind of shallow ponds, um, this is fine. And I know a lot of people think of like the t uh, one inch uh, per gallon rule, but I don't think that really works. I think you have to consider um, fish by fish. I mean, in the same way I have a leopard gecko and a crested gecko, um, the leopard gecko needs horizontal space, the crested gecko needs vertical space. They're both um, geckos, but they need opposite uh, habitats. So I think the same thing happens with fish. I don't think it's just like all fish need the same thing. Um, so yeah, it has a lot of swimming space and I'm doing multiple things to keep the water in check. I, I think it's alright. Um, the beta seems fine. Um, here he is hiding. See, hiding in the plant there. He swims around the whole thing. Um, anyway, so as far as what I have here, uh, the betta, I have a zebra murite snail, um, some anacharis, uh, a few pothos vines cuttings, which are rooted, uh, some blooming peace lily, uh, a little banana plant down there. Um, this watt is a full spectrum uh, compact fluorescent light, uh, which I have on a timer. Um, the full spectrum is important. Also, these plants are all known to thrive under a uh, compact fluorescent light. Um, and they're known to thrive being immersed, which means that their leaves are out of the water, but their roots are in the water. Um, in, in the wild, these grow like alongside rivers and streams and grow in that kind of riparian environment. Um, so this filter is a top fin 10, uh, which is rated for 10 gallons. I modified it by um, taking off the little intake tube and then sealing up the uh, intake kind of hole with um, a couple zip ties and some screen. Um, this heater has a thermostat in it um, and it's set to 78 degrees and then I have a uh, thermometer there to double check um, to make sure the temperature's all right. Uh, then I, I got some comments about um, whether this material is safe for um, a betta. Uh, the, it, it's galvanized steel, uh, but I coated the inside, the entire inside, with 100% um, silicone, which is rated as okay for poultry plants, okay for sealing up water pipes, um, so that's fine. Um, and then also, I was not aware of this, but um, apparently there's a big risk of bettas uh, jumping out of tanks, like more so than other fish. Um, so what I did was I bought uh, about five feet of this very uh, wide tubing um, and I cut it up and put it around. So now I have this barrier that's a little more uh, than the length of the fish from the water surface. And um, male bettas have really big kind of floppy clumsy finnage. So to my knowledge, this will be enough to uh, keep them from jumping out. Uh, and then oh, finally someone asked if I have cats. Uh, I do uh, uh, have two cats where I'm living right now, but um, one of them is elderly and needs, like, cat steps to walk up things, and the other one is um, extremely lazy and will sit for hours and meow to uh, get led up to something that's about half as tall as this. So I think it's fine. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for the interest. I really appreciate it. And um, I actually really also appreciate the people who were a little upset at first and thought that this wasn't adequate. Uh because I think it's really important that, just on principle, uh, you know, we care about living things that uh, can feel any sort of suffering and pain. And I'd say that, you know, fish can feel fear. If you, if you ever keep a fish really properly, all these behaviors kind of emerge from what may have initially seemed to be just a very boring, brainless animal. 
And I think it's important, you know, to uh, consider the well-being of all things. So that is my tank. Uh, thank you very much.